merciful are the most beneficent and merciful. Here I am, Muhammad Jamal Khan, lecturer in Botany, University of Education, Lahore. Dear students, Assalamu Alaikum. Today, we will discuss a topic that related to our elective subject, that is microbiology. In this lecture, we will discuss another type of microscopy, that is electron microscopy. In electron microscopy, we further discuss its two types. One is transmission electron microscopy and the other one is scanning electron microscopy. So first of all, here we have the index in which, uh, first of all we discuss about general introduction and principle and types of electron microscopy. Then we have transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy. So first we discuss about electron microscopy. So, so electron microscope uh, is the microscope that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a source of illumination. So the wavelength of an electron can be up to 100,000 times shorter than that of visible light photons. So, electron microscope have a high resolving power than any other microscope and can reveal the structure of smaller objects. So, the very best light microscope have a resolution limit of about 0.2 micrometer only. So, the electron microscope are used to investigate the ultra structure of wide range of biological and inorganic specimens including microorganisms cells large molecules metals and crystals so the detailed internal structure of larger microorganism also can't be effectively studied by light microscope so there are various limitations that arise from the nature of visible light waves not from any inadequacy of the light microscope itself so electron microscope have a much greater impact So, the electron microscope simply uses electromagnetic lenses, electrons and a fluorescent screen to produce the magnified image. And that magnified image can be captured on a photographic film to create an electron photomicrograph. So the general principle is very simple. Uh, as you know, we use uh, electron instead of light in electron microscope because electron possess a very shorter wavelength than uh, the photons of light. And uh, this, due to this, it is very accessible for us to make the image very larger and very clear and in addition to this the circular electromagnetics play a very vital role in foc focusing the beam of electron so actually this property is analog to the lenses in the light microscope so th this is the major principle to make the things visible clear and larger so when one compare these two microscope electron and light microscopy 
over baseline in comparison of these is wavelength resolving power and the aperture diameter these are the three main uh, domains on the behalf of which we compare these two microscopy so here in this slide there is a clear indication of differentiation between the range of these two microscope electron and light microscope as you observe the range of light microscope that is almost started from 100 nanometer to more than 100 micrometer but the range of electron microscope scope is marvelous as you observe it started from here not almost near about 10 angst more than 10 angstrom to more near about 100 micrometer so it's a very good range in which number of molecules number of uh, entities are present in the in this range as you observe from the right side of this flyer there is a, it includes atoms amino acids proteins viruses my mycoplasma typical bacteria red blood cells then we have epithelial cells so number of things are being present in this range that can uh, be viewed by electron microscope so here in this slide you clearly observe a clear uh, difference between uh, the between the image that are produced by different microscope or different range of microscope here in this a as you observe this uh, this is the image of uh, rhodos brilliant uh, that is uh, taken by the phase contrast like microscope at this range at this magnification the next one that is b is this is again the image that is produced by the transmission electron microscope that have a this magnification but this time we use electron microscope for uh, the for the rhodospirillium rubrum and in the last image that is taken by transmission electron microscope so a hell of difference between all these images that is uh, taken by different uh, magnification powers of different microscope from contrast phase contrast light microscope to the transmission electron microscope so now uh, different types of electron microscope for illustration uh, uh, for these two types of electron microscope I have a uh, image uh, later in this uh, presentation first of all we uh, should know what is the transmission and scanning electron microscope so the transmission in transmission electron microscope electron pass through the specimen and are scattered so the magnetic lens focus the image onto a fluorescent screen or a photographic plate while the scanning in uh, in scanning electron microscope a primary electron sweep across the swept, uh, specimen and knock electron from its surface so these scanning electrons are picked up by a collector amplified and transmitted onto a viewing screen or a photographic plate so we have a very clear uh, differentiation between these two two types of uh, electron microscope one is transmit and other one is scan in transmit only the scattered the electron that uh, after hitting the specimen and and it scattered those scattered uh, electrons are focused by the magnetic lens on a fluorescent screen to produce an image but in scanning uh, electron microscope we have a primary electron that hit to the specimen and then the specimen produce scanning microscope 
uh, the uh, scanty electron that are present on its surface so those surface are then collected by the collector amplified and transmit into a photographic plate this figure give a very good illustration between these two types of electron microscope one is transmission the other one is scanning so a here a indicate the transmission and the b indicate the scanning electron microscopy so simply here we have the source of electron in the form of electron gun then electron beam produced from by electron gun enter into here and these uh, the electron beam then the electromagnetic condenser lens condense the electron beam that is produced by elect, uh, electron gun and then all the beam focused towards specimen here we have a specimen and after transmit through this specimen again a diverge beam is synchronized by the electromagnetic objective lens then in the same path we have electron electromagnetic projector lens that project this the image of specimen on a fluorescent screen or a photographic plate and one can view this image through an eyepiece here while in scanning electron microscope here we have a source of electron that is electron gun from this electron beams are produced and this beam then through electromagnetic lenses here and here these beams are condensed by these electromagnetic lenses so these electromagnetic lenses again focus these these two beams that passes through here other one is here so these electromagnetic uh, lenses focus these beams on specimen so after hitting these uh, electron beam so these electron beam is uh, uh, before the hitting to specimen we call it as primary electron beam but after hitting on the surface of the specimen electron that are present on surface of specimen excited and these excited electron here that are indicated by the black arrowheads captured by electron collector and this electro collector receive this information and give to the amplifier and this amplifier then produce an image on a screen so first we discuss the detail of transmission electron microscope so simply first of all we reveal the working of transmission electron microscope in electron microscope the assembly is complex and sophisticated as we observe in the figure later on but the basic principle behind its operation that can be easily understood a heated tungsten filament in the electron gun generates a beam of electron that is then focused on a specimen by the condenser or electromagnetic condenser lenses so here i have an image of electron uh, microscope uh, in which we discuss about the transmission electron microscope this is the electron microscope here we have a inflorescent uh, here we have the inflorescent screen uh, this one and then we have a 
specimen holder here specimen holder and in that we have an electron gun that produced electron beam so the final image can be displayed on the fluorescent screen or a photograph so this is a simple uh, assembly of the transmission electron microscope so so electron gun is at the top of the central column here this is the central column this one is the complete central column and uh, the electron gun is at the top of uh, the central column so the magnetic lenses are within the column the image on the fluorescent screen may be viewed through a magnifier positioned over a viewing window so the camera is in a compartment below the screen so here we have the working of electron microscope simple the electron uh, pass through a glass lens uh, shaped electron magnetics called magnetic lens are used to focus the beam of electron that are produced by the electron gun then the column containing the lenses and the specimen must be under high vacuum to obtain a clear image because electron are deflected by collision with air molecules also so after this the specimen uh, the electron uh, hit the specimen and then specimen scatters some electrons but those that pass through are used to form an enlarged image of the specimen on a fluorescent screen so a denser region in the specimen scatters more electron and that therefore appears darker in the image while the fewer electron strikes that area of the screen these reasons are uh, these reason are said to be called electron dense so in contrast electron transparent regions are brighter so the image can also be captured on a photographic film as a permanent record so the electrons are deflected by air molecules are easily absorbed and scattered by solid matter so only extremely thin slices 20 to 10 nanometer of the microbial specimen can be viewed in an average transmission electron microscope so here we have the simple working of uh, transmission uh, electron microscope with respect to a light microscope so here we have a electron gun source of electron then we have the condenser electromagnetic uh, lenses so the, these electro condenser electromagnetic lenses converge the electron beams so these beams are travel into a parallel way so in this parallel pathway a specimen is being placed so the electron uh, passes through this specimen then again we have the objective lens or we have a electromagnetic lens this electromagnetic lens again converts the electron beam so after this image is being produced and this image that is produced can be viewed through ocular lens or by a viewing screen so here we have the principle for uh, working or preparation of thin slice specimens so uh, the splicing of specimen uh, of very uh, thin cutting is very necessary for this purpose uh, we usually use uh, plastic so this process uh, process we call it as fixation so after fixation with the uh, chemicals or to stabilize the cell structure the specimen is dehydrated with different organic solvents and uh, the complete dehydration is essentially because most plastics used for embedding are not water soluble so after that next the specimen is soaked in an unpolymerized uh, liquid epoxy plastic until it is completely uh, permitted and then the plastic is hardened to form a solid block uh, of uh, specimen thin section or are cut from this block with a glass or diamond knife using a special instrument called as ultra micro tom so after this the most important is the staining of specimen 
Uh, as you know, as with the bright field microscopy cells, usually must be stained before they can be seen clearly. So the probability of electron scattering is determined by the density, atomic number of the specimen atoms. So the biological molecules that are more composed of majorly primary, uh, primarily of atoms with low atomic numbers uh, such as hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and electron scattering is fairly constant throughout the unstained cell. Therefore, the specimens are prepared for observation by soaking thin section with solution of heavy metals like lead citrate and uranyl acetate. So these uh, heavy metals ions bind to cell structure and make them more electron opaque and increasing the contrast in the material. So the stain this section are then mounted on tiny copper grids and viewed. So here we have two other important techniques uh, preparing for specimen. One is negative staining and the other one is sh shadowing. So firstly we reveal the negative staining. In negative staining, heavy metals do not penetrate the specimen but render the background dark. So whereas the specimen appears bright in photo, uh, photograph, so negative staining is an excellent way to study the structure of viruses, bacterial gas, vacuoles and other similar objects. So the other technique is in shadowing. So a specimen is coated with a thin film of platinum or other heavy metal by evaporation at an angle of about 45 degrees centigrade from horizontal so the metal strikes the microorganisms so that the metal strikes the micro microorganism only only on one side this technique is particularly useful in studying virus morphology prokaryotic flagella and dna as she, you shown in the figure below so uh, it is also po uh, also possible uh, by like uh, transmission electron microscope to view the interior of the cell by a technique called freezing fracturing so in this technique the cell is frozen and then fractured with the knife the cleaving of a specimen reveals the surface of structures inside the cell and other technique is freezing etching which involves the evaporation of water from this frozen and fractured specimen can then expose additional surface for examination and both these freezing fracturing and freezing etching is illustrated in next in this figure here we have etching and fracturing in etching the specimen firstly uh, frozen in a block of ice and then broken apart with a very sharp knife as you observed here so this here we have a simpler block of ice in which the cell is present and uh, this cell frozen is in uh, this uh, the cell uh, frozen in a block of ice so Fred so by sharp knife we cut it and this cut surface or fracture exposes interior surface to the nuclear membrane also but in other case freeze etching here what is vapor evaporated directly from the ice and frozen cytoplasm of the fractured specimen uncovering additional surfaces of, for observation so here we have a block of ice in which we have a specimen or cell so from this uh, block of ice water is evaporated and So after the evaporation of water from this ice block, the etching exposes outer surface of the organelles and plasma membrane. So this indicates the etched ice uh, that is produced by the evaporation of water. So when in this figure by using uh, uh, a freeze etch uh, technique. Uh, through transmission electron microscope one can clearly observe the gas uh, vesicles in uh, a microcystis specimen here these are the gas vesicles that were observed by transmission electron microscopy 
by using a freeze edge technique. So here we have a, uh, you can say the comparison between the light and transmission electron microscope. The feature is highest uh, practical magnification that is then about 1000 to 1500 and this is about 100,000 uh, magnification. Then we talk about the resolution. Here we have 0 0.2 micrometer and here we have a 0 0.5 nanometer. A very big difference. Next we have a radiation source, only a visible light, but in transmission electroscope we use electron beam. After that we have the medium of travel, it's a air and it's only a vacuum. Type of lens, here we have a glass lens and here we have an electromagnetic lenses. The source of contrast, here we have differential light absorption but here we have a scattering of electrons. Focusing mechanism in uh, light microscope is the adjust lens position mechanically while in a transmission electron microscope we use adjust current the magnetic lenses. Then the method of changing uh, magnification in a light microscope is switch the objective lenses or eyepiece uh, while in elect transmission electron microscope we adjust the current to the magnetic lenses. Uh, the specimen uh, mount uh, over a glass light while in, a, in light microscope while in electron mi uh, transmission electron microscope we have a metal grid usually copper. So here we have the applications of transmission electron microscope simply uh, it provides a very uh, excellent view of internal structures so it is used to observe fine detail of cell structure and it gives a two dimensional image and uh, the transmission electron microscope also used because it is the shape of organelles within the microorganism. So here are some of the limitations of transmission electron microscope due to limiting limited penetrating power of electrons can only view very thin slices only near about 70 to 90 nanometer of specimen. So the slides uh, must fix, dehydrate and view specimen under a vacuum. Uh, staining may be used to enhance image uh, contrast or in addition to this treatments kill specimen and may cause shrinkage and distortion of cell. So now we discuss about uh, another type of electron microscope that is scanning electron microscope. So generally uh, it gives excellent view of external structure. The magnification is more than 10,000 uh, times more resolving power in 20 nanometer or better and it gives a three-dimensional view and more recent invention than DMA and it's a latest uh, you can say the type of electron microscope okay uh, before uh, we go into the working of uh, scanning electron microscope one thing uh, I mentioned here the specimens are covered with a thin layer of heavy metal in uh, scanning electron microscope. So the narrow beam of electron uh, that we call as primary electron is uh, swept across specimen surface. So the electrons on the specimen surface are knocked out and creating a secondary electron beam which is collected and amplified to produce an image. So uh, basic uh, working of like, scanning electron microscope is started by the preparation of a specimen. So the specimen uh, preparation for SAM is relatively easy in case uh, in some cases air dried material can be examined directly. So most often microorganisms must first be fixed, dehydrated and dried uh, to preserve surface structure and prevent collapse of the cells when they are exposed to scanning electron microscope high vacuum. After this, uh, before uh, viewing the dried sample that are mounted and coated with a thin layer of metal to prevent the build up of an electrical charge on the surface or and to give a better image such as gold or palladium. So the scan electron microscopy is operated by scanning or sweeping a very narrow beam of electrons that we call as primary electrons. 
So. So the electron uh, leaving the specimen are act as candy electron. So they are collected and the current and the resulting image is displayed on a screen. So the photographs of the image can be made and enlarged for further study. So here the, uh, we have a different image that we obtained from transmission electron microscope in A. Here we have a fungus. Aspergillus, Aspergillus, and then in B we have actinomycetes, and uh, then in uh, C we have the structure of a areolarian, and in D we have a diatoms that related to a algae here. So we have a very clear view of different uh, specimens that are taken by the electron uh, transmission uh, scanning electron microscope so here we have a very schematic uh, diagram of uh, scanning electron microscope uh, here when the beam, uh, uh, to create an image from scanning electron microscope uh, a tapered electron beam that is produced through an electron gun back and forth over the specimen so when so this beam then passes through uh, electromagnetic uh, lenses or condenser lenses and then even it in, uh, it uh, strikes to the particular area of the specimen so when the beam strikes uh, a particular area surface atom discharge surface atom discharge a tiny shower of electrons called secondary electrons at the surface of the a specimen and these are trapped by the special detector so the scanned electrons entering the detector strike and causing it to emit light flashes that are photo multiplier converts to an electrical current and amplifies so the signal is sent to the cathode ray tube and produce an image like a television picture which can be viewed through uh, viewed through uh, as a photograph or as a uh, micro photograph so a number of scanned electron uh, reaching detectors depend on the nature of the specimen surface. So when the electron beam strikes a raised area, a large number of scanned electron enter the detector. So in contrast, a fewer electron escape uh, and a depression in the surface and reach the detector. So thus raised areas appear lighter on the screen and depression are darker. So here we have another figures or image that we obtained from scanning electron microscope. One is the figure of Staphylococcus, and the other one is the figure of uh, Cristispira that we obtained uh, from uh, uh, scanning electron microscope. So here we have some of the applications of uh, scanning electron microscope. So we use to create image of the surfaces of specimen to resolve object as close as 20 nanometer. So giving magnification up to approximately a uh, approximate 15,000 times uh, magnified. Uh, so the scanning electron microscope give us a wonderful three dimensional view of the specimen. And in addition to this, it will be helpful to study different uh, pathological uh, or causative disease causative agents uh, or to investigate or help us in investigation the various uh, phenomena uh, that will occur in specific structure or in specific organism so it is it is a very uh, effective in the study of uh, ultra structure or to study a very refined uh, formation or uh, you can say that the accomplishment of uh, various uh, structures or organs or organisms so uh, this is all about for this lecture and I hope so you have uh, attained a very good illustration regarding uh, electron microscope and their types as uh, a transmission electron microscope as well as the scanning electron microscope so stay safe and healthy
ہاف ہے